What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to start styling out that trip creation form. So let me actually show you what it's going to look like at the end. So in a blank app here, if you create a new trip and let's say we're doing Florence and you'll notice the image loads fully up here and we have a little bit nicer, cleaner look to our start and end date. And you can choose the dates here and change them and continue on to the next piece. We're only gonna be doing this one page here, so let's get started. To begin, let's find this file, which is our create trip date. So under our new trips, date view here, this is the file we're gonna be working with. Um, let's make that bigger. So the first thing we're gonna do is use a sliver, is what it's called, and that's gonna allow us to kind of have a large image up here and then this this will be scrollable if we wanted there's really not that much content on this page so it'll just kind of make it move a little bit if you if you do scroll up and down um, ideally those are probably better for like if, if you have a list of data and you want the image up here larger which we can do later but for now let's just set this up anyway so find the uh, scaffold of our of our app here and we're going to first right after the scaffold we want to wrap our whole um we want to use the body here and wrap or put inside of this child column go ahead and wrap this in a new widget and then call and the widget this is is going to be the custom scroll view and once we have the custom scroll view here we can actually just start using slivers instead of the child so actually all of this that we have oh all of this code we have in here as the child, let's just go ahead and comment out. And we're gonna kind of start rebuilding it. So, so we want the slivers, which is gonna be widgets. And then now we can add this header, which is up here. We could pretty much add that app bar header in as a sliver. So there's actually a thing called the, slitter, the sliver app bar so go ahead and use that and then we can give this a title although i don't think we really want to give we're going to kind of leave that blank for now but you could give it a title if you want uh we're going to give it a background color which uh since we're going with green on the app so far i guess we will just keep it with green i think regular green is what we're using so there's that then we need to give this actually a height so uh, the reason we're getting a problem here is this needs to be text. Uh, go ahead and give this a height, which actually we use expanded height. And I think 350 will be nice, at least on the iPhone. All right, and then now that it has a height, we need to give it uh, some content. So we can actually use this uh, flexible space. And this flexible space will basically be the content of the, of the app bar when it is fully uh, first loaded when it's like fully showing. So we're going to use a flexible space bar. And this will take, this takes actually a background, which we want to give it this image here. So if we get it, if we give it our image, which we call right down here with our get image function, uh, you could place that there. This is just any image. So any image, if you see, if you go down and find the function that we're using for that get image, uh, it's actually right above here. We're pretty much just returning a network image. So any, any image URL you have would work there. If you're using the Google plugin, then this will get you that image. So this doesn't look great. The first thing we want to do is actually remove our original app bar. So now at least we have one app bar and you can see as you start to scroll the image will get smaller now we do want the image to take up the whole uh content here and not show any green actually the green is kind of just a um fallback background color which you'll see while the image is loading which actually will probably happen every time just for a little bit in the beginning so go up to our get image um function up here and we can change a few things firstly let's get rid of the max height parameter here. We need one either max height or max width. So we'll just keep with the max width and we'll make it uh, 700, which should 
get us the width of any pretty much any device i mean you could go even higher it doesn't matter it just you just want something that'll be wide enough uh, and then when we return our image url here as a network image we also want to make this uh we want to crop it to fit so use a box um box fit and do cover so cover will make it fill the hole uh, and this should be fit not fix and it will make it cover the whole screen there so that looks good you can still go back you can still choose a different one and it will fill it in very similarly all right great so our image is looking good the next thing we're going to want to do is bring that card back here and tell and display the name of the location all right so after the sliver app bar we're going to do a sliver fixed um, extent list and this again is just going to have two columns so we do need to give it an item height um, item extent which is going to be essentially the height uh, so for now let's just do 200 and then we can start we can use this delegate here and we could start adding uh, list uh, items so we're actually going to use the sliver child list delegate here and now we can we can give it children which will just be uh, a list or an array rather of of widgets so we do already have a way we do, are already building this uh, select details widget down here with this function so uh, you can see what we commented out earlier is that right there so you can put that back in here and you'll see that pops right up and that looks good we're actually going to edit this now slightly to to put the the start and end date right in this card here uh, and then this card is going to actually follow us through as we keep going so find where we're building the select details which is right here this function and we're actually going to remove uh, these rows of content that have pretty much uh, no no value really right now um, so go ahead and get rid of those now you can see it's just the title which is what we want and then after the title is where we're going to put the start and end date so we could just write that right in this card but let's actually go ahead and make it its own widget and then call it within the card so this one we can call uh, i guess this is building the selected dates and we're just going to return a container here let me uh quickly kind of write this out and then i'll explain it i think that'll be a better way to do this all right and there is our start and end date so up in this function here this build selected dates uh, we're pretty much we have one container here it's wrapped in padding just so we can have a little bit of space on top here um, that's it only has top padding so that's what that is then it's just one row so it's one row of three columns so you can see they're spaced evenly so one column is the start date another one is this arrow and the third one is the end date so then within these columns you can see this right here is the start date and this is center aligned both on the X and Y axis. So you can see it's just right in the middle, all the content here. Uh, and then it has three, basically inside this column, it has three elements, the start date text up at the top. Then we reformatted the, um, the date to just look like this with two, uh, you know, the month and the day. Um, and we're using that start date variable, which we have in our, um, which we have already set up. And then we just added a little bit of style to this, changed the, changed the font size and the color. And then finally, we just did pretty much the same thing we did with the date up here, except we formatted it just for the year. And we didn't change the size of the text, but we did change the color. Uh, the middle one, I mean, the start and the end date are exactly the same. The only difference is obviously the variable. So there is potential to refactor this and just pass the variable in, but we're not gonna do that right now. Uh, then the arrow is just an icon with a larger size and a different color So that's what will get you looking like that and Finally, then you just take this build selected dates and call it down here in your build selected details card, which is this 
And, and just to reiterate, that is what's being called up here in this sliver. So after we have our build selected details, we can now call our buttons. So the buttons should also, we should also make them into their own widget. And then we can call that widget up in the sliver. So a widget that we can say build, build buttons. I guess is good enough. I don't know. We could be a little bit more descriptive, but that will work for now. Uh, again, I'm just going to write this out and then come back and explain it. All right. So building the buttons again is called right here. And all it is is pretty much the same code we already had up here with our two buttons. Uh, one of them is the submit button and the other one was the button where you can change the, the date. So in our build buttons widget, we're just returning one column, which is this column with the buttons. One thing that's kind of nice here is that we're, uh, we're using the media query of the width of the screen and making the buttons uh, essentially 60% of the width. That's what this multiplied by 60 is here. And then we just have these two raised buttons and you'll notice they're inside a size box and that's actually so we can use the media query width there. Um, yeah, basically it's pretty simple here though. Just two raised buttons. The functionality of what they do was already discussed in previous videos, but this is more of just a, a layout video that could kind of be used for anybody, even if you're not quite following along with this. Um, so yeah, if you hit change dates, you'll see the date picker shows up and you can change your dates. Let's say the 10th through the 13th. And if we hit okay there, You'll see that is updated right on the screen there. All right, great. That's going to be it for this. Ciao for now.